She's got you running errands, you know, picking up wedding dresses. <laughs> Whoop! -ah! Marriage. Marriage is what brings us together today. You are now listening to Cutmaster Cast. Yo, 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 what's happening, you guys? Welcome back uh, to another round of the Cutmaster Cast, your weekly dose of wedding industry insights. My name is Chris Romero. And my name is Tony Pacheco. What's up, everybody? What's up, you guys? We are DJs out of Albuquerque, New Mexico with Cutmaster Music. This is season number two, episode number 54, yep. I believe is what we are on here. And um, on this podcast, we like to explore our weekly events, wedding industry tips and hacks. And at the end of every episode on Spotify and Apple Music, <laughs> yeah, there you, go. you know how we do it. We take it back to the music. Um, so, uh, And also, don't forget to share this episode and follow us on all socials at Cutmaster Music. Yeah, you can check out all of the previous episodes we've done on YouTube. We're putting them out here on Facebook now. But I feel like some of them are geared more towards vendors. Some are geared more towards brides. So we totally understand that not every episode is going to be for you. But we really encourage you to check out some of these episodes because there's a lot of good meat and potatoes in there. We're giving out really good nuggets, some on planning, some on how to make a sale, a bunch of different avenues we always try to explore. So yeah, check them out. Just look at the, the episode titles and, and see which ones fit for you. Yeah. I was laughing at today's title, The Naughty Music this List. Is the Naughty Music List. We're going to talk about this. We're going to get into it a little bit uh, with our topic for today. Yeah. Um, and it's been a, a, a something that's kind of been a hot topic just in the DJ circle um, recently. So it's evolving. I yeah, I figured we'd hop on the bandwagon with it. And, uh, you know, it gives us a, we can give our take on, on what we think about this. But totally. we'll get into that in a little bit. Let's start uh, things off talking about our events. We actually, we're, we were not able to record and get on last week. So we, we, we had a little two week uh, hiatus. Break. Yeah. But uh, we are back. And um, this once again, this is slow season for us. So, 
Um, no events going on for me. I've been, uh, it, I'm in the middle of AAU basketball season right now. Nice. So I get to, it's kind of nice. This is why I like this time of year too. Yeah. being slower. It allows me to coach, uh, mm-hmm. coach Jude and Evan's playing soccer. So nice. Uh, yeah. That's got that, fun. got that little knucklehead out there. Um, soccer is a good, uh, sport for somebody that age, right? Yeah. That's, that's kind of the sport where it's like uh, it's just kids that, you know, they're, they're, trying to figure it out yeah. yeah they just chase the ball right it's like a herd yeah, of cattle. shout out soccer shout out uh, nm united that's right so uh so but i know did have you had any events like anything uh uh you have, not uh, in the past few yeah. weeks i think i was nope nope nothing nope. at marble. marble marble we did marble no honestly but i do have quite a few coming up for the rest of the month right because i've got marble heights tomorrow that's friday then sunday fun day which will be 2000s themed this Sunday at Revel. And then we're doing um, a 420 celebration over at Altitude. So that'll be cool. And then another Sunday fun day with all Drake, all Drake day. Oh, dang. Yeah. So, that'll be cool. And then another wedding in there too. I think uh, Victoria's got something coming up too, right? Like I saw her put out yeah. her list. So uh, go check out DJ Mischievous. Uh, she's shouts. doing a bunch of different things. I think she's over at uh, Bama's. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I know she's got a few things yeah. coming up. So that's good. DJ Joe with us has got one coming up. Yeah. What is that? May 4th? It's like an all Latin uh, vibe. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for that. I think it's good for him to get this opportunity to just get exposure, DJ, and and really DJ in a crowd that is um, asking for a party. You right. know what I mean? Because as long as you curate your playlist correctly and you know how to DJ, it's pretty straightforward. Um, the thing they were at, they were talking to me about the booking and they were like, are you bilingual? You know anybody? I was like, nah, you're going to have to get another guy on a mic for that part. <laughs> no, <it's>, senor. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of value in, in uh, bilingual mic um, or MC. So. All right, so Cutmaster's hiring. We're looking for a bilingual DJ. Yeah. I was going to say, I need to sign up for Duolingo. Oh, hey, That's well, like maybe thing. my wife. Maybe I can hire her. There you go. My wife's a Spanish teacher. Yeah. Uh, maybe we can teach her how to DJ and, uh, you know. <laughs> MC? And MC. I mean, she doesn't even have to DJ. She could just MC. There we, there we go. You know? All yeah. right. Either way, we... Uh, I'll, I'll interview her. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> uh, this past weekend, I was able to go to attend a wedding as a guest. Ooh. So this... that was fun. Okay. So this is interesting because... I can probably count on one hand. In fact, I don't even think I need all these fingers. Um, I need how many fingers. weddings I've been to as a guest in probably the last 20 years. This was my fourth wedding ever attending. And I've probably been a part of 200 plus weddings in my 10 years of doing this. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? And yeah. so it's just crazy to <laughs> see it so often and then be able to attend it and be a guest. Um, but the venue was awesome. We were in Baytown, uh, Texas, which is like 20 minutes right outside of Houston. Uh, really, really cool spot. They have like, it's just really green and the boats there are really cool. They got a Bucky's. Our hotel was right next to a Bucky's. We went probably oh, four man. times. <laughs> I love Bucky's. I've but never been to a Bucky's. Good food. Really, really good snacks. And that's why I kept going back because I kept buying like the fudge. They've got these things called Bucky's Nuggies. With a white cheddar habanero. Bucky's Nuggies? Oh, my God. Yeah, everything is there is so good. But that's for another podcast. I know. I've seen, you know, we've got a lot of friends out in Texas. And uh, like Nate Nelson and the oh, yeah. horse crew are always talking and, and, and mm-hmm. stopping at Bucky's. Monica says no. She's already turned down my invitation to our bilingual DJ. She's she's not having it. That's hilarious. Fine, you're fired. <laughs> All right. Uh <laughs> Um, <laughs> so yeah, it was in Baytown, Texas. Really, really beautiful venue. This place was built to be a wedding space. You drive in, it was almost Los Poblanos y mm. it had all the greenery, had its short driveway. Yeah. You come into a parking lot and then it's a big, big white barn, and then they have this really nice little ceremony space just off to the right. But the way you walk in, it was just so nice. And then they also had like ponds, lakes, a bridge over the river, all of this beautiful, beautiful spaces to just take photos. and That sounds cool. Yeah, right? It was awesome. Now, from the entertainment standpoint, I had to really say once I I got into the parking lot, I told my girlfriend and another friend that we were with, okay, I'm turning it off. I have to physically say that because if I don't do that, I've learned that I can't. Yeah. And it's hard as DJs and anybody out there and your own industry, right? Mm-hmm. And like it's tough. It's tough to go to a nightclub. You start over 
critiquing DJs right? and lighting and you're doing your work and it's just so frustrating sometimes because it can uh it can really throw you off when you're just trying to have a good time. Right. You know what I mean? And so one thing that I tried to do was turn it off, but the first thing I did was walk in there and be like, "Why is the speaker on the front on the floor? Don't you have a speaker stand or anything to There was like a little spot right next to it that allowed you to just set your speaker on top of the dang thing. Like it was like a I don't even know what it was, like maybe for a fireplace or something like a level, but it was really really unfortunate that I had to like just walk in there and first thing I did was critique. You know what I mean? Right. But but it was like a wrong answer. I was like, come on. Like, come on. You need to, because uh, the way sound travels is it's, it travels down. So you want to make sure that you have sound at a nice elevated level. But if you don't, it's not going to work out the best way. Because if it's on the ground, then it's just not, nobody can hear it. And so the ceremony begins. It's all good. They're doing their music. It's a beautiful moment. And then the officiant begins. And there's no mic, no amplification. And, <laughs> and, and it's funny enough, I'm talking to one of my buddies about it, and I'm like, well, think about it, right? You want to make sure at least your efficient is amplified, because if they're not amplified, you can't hear them, and it's going to be different. And sometimes it's not a big deal, but I realized it's a big deal. You check out when you don't hear. When you can't hear what they're saying, you're just kind of there, and you're like, okay. Yep. Well, uh, okay, I can hear him again or whatever. And then you hear, like, people laughing in the front row, and then you feel out of it, not in involved. You know what I mean? Like, it's so frustrating because you can really disconnect half of your guests just by doing that. You know what I mean? Right. And it's so frustrating because it's you want everybody to be a part of your wedding day, but if they something's as simple as not being able to hear, it makes the world of a difference in, in – be people being present in the space and i didn't really understand that yeah and it's cool because now it's like a selling point for me when because now i'm like I'll, my usual question is do you need amplification for your mics for your ceremony right you want people to hear your vows you want people but now i can explain to them i was a guest there was no amplification and it really did affect the overall feel you have people looking back you got the dj going turn on you know what I mean? Right, and that's yep. that's my worst. So we were talking about horror stories. Me and Sindra, uh, she is a film familiar with the wedding uh, industry. And we were talking to our friend and saying how nerve-wracking the ceremony is and how important it is and how when something falls short, it's really unfortunate. And they're like, really? The ceremony is like nerve? And we're like, oh, my God. Can you imagine not having a mic, right? And that's how we went into it. Yeah. And so it was just so unfortunate to see it happen. And I like, feel like oh. microphones are the common denominator with DJs in stress. Like, that is like a like biggest fear. And yeah. it's all wireless technology, right? Just mm -hmm. that. And there's different techniques that you can go about uh, your microphones and making sure. I will say... She didn't do a sound check beforehand. I was yeah. sitting there 15 minutes beforehand enjoying the music, and it was great. But there was never a time where she actually put the officiant there and said, count to 10 for me. Mm. Let me double check your levels. And then that's what, I'll, I, that's, that's, what, that's what you should be doing, you know? And so that was unfortunate. But you're not going to let that just leave a sour, uh, sour uh, taste in your mouth. You're going to keep moving forward. Sure. So we go into our reception space. This is a big thing I think is... Um, for anybody planning a wedding, I think you need to make sure you have three distinct spaces. Ceremony, cocktail hour, location, and then dinner space. Now, one thing that was unfortunate was the wind. Mm. The wind was insane. And so I think there was supposed to be get your drinks and then have a drink on the outside patio and all of that. But also the music was inside. Nobody was told not to go indoors. And so when you have that happen, people are sitting there for two hours potentially. So it can just feel really long as opposed to the transitions, the in-betweens. We talk about that a lot. Right. So um, just that was kind of unfortunate. Open bar, so that was cool. Good time. Um, the emceeing was very subpar. The, the individual didn't get out but from behind the booth. They, there was only one, they were only one person, so I'll give them that. But there was very little engagement. We didn't really understand what was happening. And it was it was unfortunate because the way they had the sound set up, I'm like, why didn't you just put two speakers over here and run that? Like, 
this whole half of the room can't hear it because you're tucked in the corner right here. Yeah, you showed me pictures, and that's what it looked like. Like you were the the sound system in the DJ was up against kind of like a staircase. Yeah. So the way the barn was set up was like a two rooms at the second level, and then it went to a staircase and led down. Really awesome for grand intros, all that. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, but yeah, they they have. DJ on one side of the staircase and then like photo booth on the other side of the staircase. Yeah, it was. Which a, I didn't think aesthetically looked right. Right. When it, they it, entered, it I can imagine. It looked a little weird. Yeah, the layout. And me and uh, Syndra, my girlfriend, were talking about it on how like I would have put the DJ over here and we should, they would have done that there. Just the overall flow because you could have made this space your dance party area right. and then dinner space. And it yeah, just, because some of the pictures that you showed, it looked like, okay, she was like separate from where the dance area was. Yeah. So like dancers were all far away. Mm. She was like in this little nook corner yeah. that it almost looked like it made it hard to see the dance floor. It was tricky for her. I could see she had a solid view of it, but I wouldn't have been happy with right, that. Placement. Right. You know, I mean, it's fine, but even that, like, uh, mispronouncing names little things just kept one i guess one hiccup is maybe okay but as these hiccups keep happening over and over you start getting you start going down dramatically yeah. quickly and so uh there was no up lighting for the space nothing against that person but white up walls white white it was walls white were interior begging yeah. to be uplit you know and i'm like ah it's so frustrating to see it even with white up light like it would look sure, cool. Like it yeah. Made a pop, right? Anything, yeah. yeah. Um, but so that was really unfortunate. And then the DJing aspect, her song selection was okay, but she didn't overall like evolve with the night. So like she would notice we were dancing to one genre and then drown us in it for like six, seven songs. And by the time, you know, you get Mr. Brightside, of course, who doesn't love that song? You played at the right time, it's gonna hit. Yeah. So then she goes into all the small things. And then okay. goes into Fall Out Boy. Uh, Was she mixing? No. Playing the full song. Oh. I even made a joke when we started doing the wobble. I'm down. I don't mind. If it's going to be played, I know how to wobble. Everybody's down. I'm not DJing. We have our yeah, opinions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're able to let loose, have a good time, right? I can right? show you guys how to wobble. That's fine. So right. I'm getting in there. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's what... But I, I made a joke. I was like, if I know this DJ, because she had been DJing already for a couple hours now, Everybody's going to be wobbling for at least four and a half minutes. Right. So I'm going to wobble for my minute and a half, and I'm stepping to the side. And sure enough, wo wobble. It's just, and it gets tiring. It's a long, it's a long song. Yeah, it's yeah. four and a half minutes of the wobble. And uh, yeah, so no mixing. Uh, I will say she did take my song request, so that was really awesome because she was able to, like, I was recommending, she played Suavemente, and I was like, you should probably play Danza Kuduro. I just made the recommendation as a, I didn't want her to know, I didn't yeah. want to step on any toes. I'm a DJ. If somebody did that to me, as I, I'd, I'd be like, great, dude, get right, the hell out right. of here. You're, I'm working. It's okay. Yeah. I'm a DJ. <laughs> <laughs> I felt bad, and I really, there were moments where she would step away from the DJ booth during open dance. I could see the song ending, and then it would autoplay into the next song. During oh. open dance, like we're like, where's this DJ at? Yeah. Like, what are you doing? And I was, I asked Cinder, I was like, if the bride tells me, will you go up there and DJ? Happily, I'll do that. But I'm not gonna, not. But I was like, oh my god, this is so painful. Yeah, that's because tough. we wanted to party. You had a crowd with an open bar who was ready to party. Good dance. There was at least fifty of us there. And when you're missing. You're only inviting people to leave. You're, we're, all of these things we talk about, it's just so frustrating. There were some distractions. There was a photo booth. There was a mechanical bull. And when you have these different... Oh, yeah. Uh, did you did you get on the bull? I did. I did get on the bull. Did you last eight seconds? I think I did. I was pretty good. I don't know. But I remember like thinking, okay, just extend your legs. You got to hold on one. And I felt good because there were guys, there were gentlemen who were definitely holding on two hands. And I was like, yeah. I'm not. You 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 had one the one hand, hand, one uh, hand ride it, ride that. Yeah, ride Woo! that bull. It was fun. It was a good time. We're gonna. I need. I need to look into that. Cutmaster Music's gonna offer a uh, bull riding. Bull riding. Uh, I thought soon. they were gonna be bouncy houses, but yeah, because I was walking outside and I was like, oh, bull cool. riding with uh, sparklers, cold sparks. Yeah, they did bubble guns actually, and they had some serious bubble guns. You know what? So the, I liked that. The Disney wedding that I did recently had some crazy bubble guns too that good, they used for the ceremony. That's a good alternative to sparklers because I know. Some venues don't. Yeah, they do. They were doing it as they were walking back yeah. down the aisle. It oh, looked yeah. Cool. See, that's good too. Yeah, the pictures were pretty mm -hmm. neat from it. Yeah. So overall, I, like I was saying, it was fine. 
I felt bad because, like, for me, I wanted to attend a wedding where it was going to be off the hook. Let's go. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And it was fine. And it was we we danced. We had a good time. We got to visit with friends who we hadn't seen. They live in New York, so that was a great experience. But what overall, my big takeaway was like, damn, we're 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 good at what we do, and I'm so proud of like the product. Yeah, that, baby. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, the product we put put out is exemplary, and I've only seen it the other couple times. And and it's funny because I was talking about it at Wed Talks, and they're I was talking about it with a the photographer. They're like, yeah, we see it every weekend. <laughs> you know yeah <laughs> i like, mean we don't uh, ah. so it's it's funny because we don't get to see other djs no. you know and we network with guys you know and sure. there's some great dudes I and mean, we were just this past week at wed talks mm -hmm. um which we're, we are going to have shauna from uh the wedding collective on here pretty yeah. soon and we're going to talk about wed talks and, and that sort of thing but mm -hmm. it's basically it's a local conference and that we attended this past week and um we ne we network with these guys but in all honesty like i've never i haven't seen them perform and i haven't seen any of the other ones that that you know that are here locally and so it's really hard to give recommendations to people be just because i don't know what their dj style is i don't yep. know what their mc style is and that sort of thing because we're always working i don't go around like seeking events right mm -hmm. and it's most of the guys that are wedding djs are not club guys so yeah. it's not they're not like you and victoria well, there's different. They They're could very actually, different, and it's and it is different. But at least they could go and see you, right? Like this is the person. This is kind of what his energy is like, and yeah. that sort of thing. Where most most wedding DJs aren't doing nightlife, so it's hard to go see them unless you're at an event. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, they're different connections, different kind of pathways, but um, yeah, just depends on what you're looking for. But yeah, you're right. There's there's different styles, and it's hard for us to recommend them because yeah, we haven't seen them. Right. But yeah, so that was interesting. But that was my overall wedding experience. The ending was fine. Uh, she was. We played Neon Moon, like the the music placement too. Like you could have played country earlier in the evening. This was a Texas wedding with a bunch of men in cowboy hats. I do. They literally I, had a bull. Yeah, they literally had a bull. <laughs> I thought going in. I told Cinder, I was like, well, we'll probably listen to a lot of first song. You're thinking like Chattahoochee or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Right? I like, thought like we're gonna listen to a lot of country music in this, and we barely got any. Even towards the end of the night, the groom was like, she didn't play half the songs I asked her to play, and all that. And so, it's just it's just unfortunate that. But we came to the conclusion that they didn't prioritize entertainment in their budget, which is fine because. Everybody has a wedding. The bride came out of that day thinking that was an amazing day. I loved it. The groom was happy with it. They were kind of uh, not fully, you know, ecstatic with the service, right, right. but overall they were happy with that they had a good day, and that's that was that was what was important to them. The food was immaculate. Really, really good local uh, vendor or uh, caterer, so that was good. It was like a steak, mashed potatoes, rice, chicken wrapped with bacon. All the good stuff. Not a lot of veggies. We were talking about it. No, like, mm -hmm. asparagus or whatever, carrots. Right. But good time. Um, could have been better, but uh, overall, I had a great experience. Well, it was good, and it made you realize it, it's always nice to see other people, too, right? Mm -hmm. And that's what I like and what I do when I go to concerts, even. It's like I watch how they're programming, doing stuff, how they carry themselves, any seeing how they're yeah. doing, you know, because I'm always looking to learn. Exactly. And so I, I can always find some sort of takeaways, whether it's a good or bad, right? And it's mm -hmm. like, all right, don't do that. Yeah, I was um, geeking out. We went to a Houston Rockets game. Oh, yeah. Moving heads everywhere, production, and I'm like, wow, this is sick. Where's the DJ at? Yeah. So we're all trying to find the DJ in the so, so this is funny. Um, coach Lee uh, is my assistant basket, AAU basketball yeah. coach, right, with Jude. And they went to a Phoenix Suns game. And so he's sending me pictures of the DJ and he goes, I, I he, he goes, I still rock with Cutmaster or something like that. <laughs> but it was, it was cool. Love it was DJ loyalty. automatic yeah. who Otto is actually from Albuquerque. Well, Albuquerque, Santa Fe, yeah. New Mexico, you know, and long story short, he's now currently one of the DJs for the Phoenix suns and automatic is awesome. Like he's so good. Nice. Like, yeah, he, that's dope. He, yeah. Someone I've always looked up to locally. Mm -hmm. And so it was just really cool that he was that sending guy, me and I was like, Oh, I was like, make sure you pay attention to him. Listen, mm -hmm. like he's really, really good. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so yeah, he was sending me pictures of the, the basketball DJs. Nice. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So good experience it was cool to go to houston we had to drive 13 hours back on sunday ah uh, forget that that sucked yeah that's uh i'm a movie guy i'll throw on a movie uh, and i can power through because dude when you got to watch the entire series of back to the future 15 times 
like in a row. That's so too long of a drive. We watched Star Wars. Okay. A couple Star Wars. Yeah, and, and, then, and uh, that's like what, 15, 15 yeah. Star Wars? I, I was trying to get Sintra to watch the extended editions of Lord of the Rings. Ooh. They're like four hours a piece. I, yeah. It's hard to watch that kind of stuff, but when you're just sitting in a car. <laughs> you could watch the entire yeah. Game of Thrones series. Uh, when we, I think we talked about it uh, last year. When we drove to New Orleans, we watched all Harry Potters. Yep. So that's cool. But well, that's cool. Yeah. I I can't do it. Road like trip games. Fe- or, uh, Las Vegas is about as far as I can drive, yeah. and then I'm just I'm done. We also have the Nintendo Switch, and we have Monopoly. Ooh. So we'll put that up there. Play Monopoly, okay. and then I'm not playing. I'll just tell her my moves. I'll be like, okay, let's buy that property. You know. <laughs> so. But that kills time for sure. Uh, well, that's cool, and yeah. it sounds like you guys enjoy it. So yeah, that's, we do all right. I'd yeah. rather fly, but right. my goodness, it's expensive out there. It's uh, it's it's tough. Stuff these days. Yeah. But so, uh, that's my events. More events coming. I got plenty of stuff coming for the next few weeks. If y'all aren't doing anything, Marble Heights tomorrow or Sunday Fun Day. Come through. There you go. All right. We are going to get into our topic today. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is uh, talking about this article uh, that the not produced. And uh, this was a hot topic these past, really, this past week in, in the DJ community. Yeah. Um, and so the not put out this article it's called uh these 26 do not play wedding songs are a hard pass says here's your comprehensive list of annoying corny and overplayed tunes to avoid at your wedding i'm going to just uh, read the the beginning part here uh this uh, the author her name's taylor carson and says has your dj or band recently tasked you with providing a list of do not play wedding songs are you working ahead on your big day playlist on your own regardless it may be it may be hard to remember all the cheesy overplayed or just plain inappropriate songs you absolutely do not want to play during your wedding so um, they give us this list of 26 songs so we're going to show you the list here and then we're going to chat a little bit about this Mm -hmm. um and talk about the reasons why it was a little hot topic in the in the DJ uh, side of things and uh, what, what our thoughts are on it. So um, starting at the bottom with the list going up to number 11, and then I'll show you the top 10 um, in just a minute, but we got Sweet Caroline, Gangnam Style, Get Low by Lil John, Celebration, YMCA, A Thousand Years, I Got a Feeling, Black Eyed Peas, Shape of You, Ed Sheeran, Old Town Road, The Hokey Pokey, what? Uh, Baby Shark. God, it's my second favorite of all time. Um, All About That Bass. Who Let the Dogs Out. Uptown Funk coming in at number 13. Shut Up and Dance. And I Can't Stop the Feeling. That's number 11. And down to the top 10 here, you get Happy by Pharrell. Um, Party Party Rock Anthem. Cotton Eye Joe. The Macarena. Cha-Cha Slide. Wobble at number 5. Cupid Shuffle number 4. Electric slide, single ladies, and number one was the chicken dance. So that's never changed in my ten years of doing this. So it's interesting. It's an interesting article, right? Yeah. Um, you know, and so the, the the first thing that I want to kind of, you know, when I look at this, I'm looking at okay, who's writing this article and who's it for, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think just by looking at it, it shows a little picture of her here on the knot, and it's kind of hard. You got to zoom in, but I mean Taylor here looks like she's probably. Honestly, like a bride, a typical bride's age, um, probably late twenties. Mm-hmm. So my guess is either she might be married or, or is just recently, recently married, right? And so I would say she's of the demographic of most, yeah, mo- most, most people, brides, brides that are getting married right now, right? Mm-hmm. And who is she writing this for? It's for other brides, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Right, couples. So th- first of all, this is not an article that's written to DJs or for DJs. So I think you've got to look at the lens, right, that she's looking at. Yeah. Um, and DJs don't do that. We look at everything through the lens of a DJ. Like how how I make my peanut butter and jelly sandwich is through the, the you know, like uh, you're lens, not doing that right. Yeah. You need it's to be, true. Yeah, you know. Everybody's doing it wrong. Everybody's Everybody's wrong. the right. That, and so that, that – I think that's initially when I started seeing these pop up in DJ forums. Oh, look at this list. Uh, they, they, people just started getting real butt hurt, you yeah. know, over this. Um, so, you know, this isn't for us. Yeah. This is for so how brides plan. Right. Or just, I think this is like songs to consider, or if these are songs that people are continually saying are overplayed. And I can agree with that 
oh, like wholeheartedly because these are songs that continually come up in conversation, but there's also songs in here that like still hit as well. So it's kind of tricky because there's definitely like I can every single song in here I can argue why they're not or why they're on the do not play. Right, right. But also song there's definitely a handful on here that are like still hit. Party rock anthem smacks. So and that and that that's kind of what I want to get to. So like when we start looking at like what our take is on mm-hmm. this, right? I think you got some people that are like, oh yeah, like I don't play the cheese. Like we I absolutely I refuse. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not playing that stuff, right? So I look at like our events. And all of our events are different. This is why I love weddings. Yeah. They're all different. So we cater to a lot of different musical tastes. Mm-hmm. Um, I think our age demographics at a typical wedding tend to be from your kids all the way up to grandparents, which can yeah. be 70s, so 80s, wide. 90s, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So you're looking at many decades spanned across lots of different genres. Mm-hmm. Um, this list, too, I think in one of the, the groups, they talked about at the end of Every year at at the end of the year, DJ Event Planner and I think DJ Intelligence puts out a list and of the top uh, 100 or 200 most requested songs of the okay. year. Yeah, half of the songs on this list are on that list as well. Yeah, right. So um, this is you know uh, uh, what what was her name Taylor's you know do not playlist, but I could also very easily see this being someone's must playlist. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure, because they love these line dances, and and and, and, do... and that's what's what happens. Like yeah. every event is so different. So for us, it's event to event, really. Like I'm not opposed to playing some of this stuff. Like is the chicken dance my favorite thing to play? Like no. Now where I think you DJs do get yeah. into trouble is they'll use a lot of these as a crutch, uh. and that's where I think like if you have to go to and start off every single one of your events with a cupid shuffle, she. Our, our DJ opened with the Cupid Shuffle, and then at, right after that, played um, what was it? Uh, not Cotton Eye Joe. What's the the boom 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 boom? Oh uh, oh uh, um, uh, uh, drawing a blank. Um, uh, Copperhead Road. There you go. Yep. And so she, I was, and right after I heard that, I was like, no, not two line dances in a row. That's like the most. It was the most stereotypical cheesy way to start, and. Got him out there, of course, right? Right, right. But like, which is fine. Like, so, and, and, ah, and so that's the thing, right? So much better so ways to do it. DJs are like, I got to get them all out right away. And the yeah. only way I know how to do this is to play the Cupid Shuffle. Mm-hmm. And so I just feel like a wedding that starts off with the Cupid Shuffle is your reaction exactly. Like, oh my God. Set here the we tone go. Like, for the evening. We're going to be a cheesy, this is a cheese fest, right? Every other wedding we've been to, we're going to hear the same old stuff. Right. It was just frustrating. But when I play the Cupid Shuffle an hour, hour and a half later, after. After maybe we decided to do a bouquet and garter toss, yeah. you've forgotten about it. You've had some drinks, Love. and now I'm, you know, I'm trying to get it. it, it I, I'm it's using it to get people, yeah. yeah. And people are like, people oh, already yeah. on the dance floor. You know what I mean, right? And and it has a different feeling yeah. at that point. Exactly. Like, oh yeah, like I, you. Would, it's the element of surprise mm-hmm. as opposed to the element of like, ah yeah, I expected them to play this. Course, like yep. right, so or uptown funk. I'm seeing that right? one, dude. I am really, really trying to stay away from that song. Same, but people love it too. Yeah. So it's interesting to hear it. Like it, it almost, depends. It's a must play, but then it's also like, ah, we've. It's not now. It's starting to creep into that playing at every single wedding. Um, I, another one I noticed on here, get low. Yep. That's definitely a fifty-fifty. That song hits every time, but also too, some people are like, I'm tired of that. So I think right now we're seeing a lot of the 2000s recurrence happening. So when I see like a get low, um, even a, a happy, I haven't, the I, haven't dogs played, out. I haven't played happy in forever. People don't like happy. I'm noticing that it doesn't just, make them happy. It's overdone. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? And all of these are just overdone all about that base. Who let the dogs out? Right. You know, shut yeah. up and dance. Let me put the, uh, but I love these and, and like, like I love to do shut up and dance with me, um, into everybody dance now. Uh, right. Yeah. I got a feeling is yeah. another one that's coming back with yeah. the right mix, mm-hmm. you know. So like the two thousands, I can I totally see. Um, but yeah, so and I think for me, it's really event to event. Now the other thing I think you have to take into consideration is as a DJ, um, I so like I'm not like particularly like a country person, right? 
Yeah. So I'm I'm aware of those types of events. Like if you ask me to do a country night, like I'm probably just not the best DJ for that. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't mean I don't play country. I play country honestly, like at almost every event, probably like 95% of them. Yeah. But it's usually like a few sprinkled in, and it's like what I call wedding country. Yeah. You know, Chattahoochee, um, Brooks, and Dunn. Brooks and Dunn, um, in low places. Ex exactly. It's like that. It's not old it's, school. It's not the the new Beyonce country. <laughs> With, uh, it's like pop. That's like more pop nowadays. Dude, that something. album. Okay, here, let's go off on a tangent for a second. <laughs> What'd you think? So I listened to it. Yeah. I was in the car with Monica. We went to a Meow Wolf in Santa Fe. Oh, yeah, there like, you go. That's the day it came out. I was like, yeah. let's listen to it. And, dude, like, it's – don't get at me, people, but that's not – like, I, I'm waiting for a country song Yeah, on it. I feel that. I mean, literally, the, 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 the track Spaghetti is a rap song. Yeah. She's, like, she's well, like I guess it's her version rapping. of country. I, right yes. like so i'm like do i just not know what country is because she's literally she's rapping it's evolving like, and, and, mean, and and then there's the little segments with like willie nelson and and yeah. dolly parton and stuff that's like a minute long like kind of introducing i'm things. wondering if what i'm like what what ca what uh standards do you have to uh appease to or i don't know what i'm trying to say but adhere to to categorize yourself as a country album right. maybe she's just trying to add to the catalog of different genres I don't have a country album yet. So I mean, she did have Lily. a picture of her on a horse <laughs> like, in the album. It's pretty country, right? I mean, I was just waiting for her like a, like a, like kind of a deep rooted country track. I mean, she, now don't get me wrong. I thought some of the songs honestly were yeah, pretty good. Exactly. I, I liked Blackbird. Her version of Blackbird was yeah. cool. There was another one or two like that were like slower tracks. Yeah, let see like a bunch of covers. Jolene, Fire, but. I didn't care for that one that much, fair honestly. Enough, fair enough. Like. I like Jolene. I, I, okay. I, I like the song. Yeah. I just her ver that version of it. So there's Probably like certain songs. I feel like Beyonce, like her voice, like really, really, really excels on stuff like Crazy in Love. Like, yeah, like she's yeah. made for this like high energy yeah. stuff. But I'm just personally not a fan of like the slower where her her she's trying to get wavy with her yeah. voice and stuff. Like, fair. it doesn't just it, for me. It's that's not as good as like the Crazy in Love high energy pop stuff, right? Uh. Did so, you are you keeping up with any of the Kendrick, J Cole? Oh yeah, I've drama? seen that. Yeah, oh yeah, I saw how good. and and J Cole came 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 out with a I'm sorry. Yeah, and, so it was a great track, and now he was like, I'm sorry. I understand where he's coming from. Um, and did you hear now? I guess Joe Budden put out on his podcast that saying Drake's coming out, Kendrick's coming out. They just left the studio, oh, and dang. so they're like, okay, J Cole, step aside. The heavyweights are coming at it, and so it's kind of cool for us as like consumers right we just get to hear really really good rap artists and right. it's good to see the greats going at it because other than that eminem's coming out with a new one yeah see? i saw awesome they uh jimmy kimmel had um dr dre snoop and 50 cent dang um all it, it actually was really good you should go watch it okay it's like a half hour segment nice. on there um but yeah they, they they dropped that that eminem's got something new something coming out so works. i'm just interested in like kind of like from an older rapper, like what's the vibe and the mm -hmm. style going to be and feel like, you know, so, yeah. um, but anyways, music's wild, man. Music just goes in so many different directions. As I know. a DJ, you got to pay attention so much. Well, so here's the other thing, getting back to our article here that we're talking Sorry, about yeah. on the knot tangent, you know, when articles like this come out, I, I get like mixed feelings because I'm like, why, why are we bashing people for their musical tastes? And I feel like the title should have been like rephrased and versus like a do not play well and it's just it's weird and maybe i mean she's not maybe, maybe she's not bashing maybe that's the wrong word but it it makes you feel like dang like if you if you're somebody reading this article a bride and you see this and you see all these songs and you're like dang i actually like all those songs <laughs> like might be a little eye-opening to you uh, though am i <laughs> you know what Basic? so but here's the thing so if if a oh, bride yeah. comes to me and this is on her must playlist, I'm gonna play on. Get, get, I got you. I, she's gonna be out on the dance floor. Yeah, it's so true. my bride and groom are gonna be out there dancing. That's what I want, and everybody else is gonna be out there dancing with them too. Yeah, I don't need to shame you for that. No. Like, no, like just because that's not my cup of tea. Mm -hmm. Now here's the thing: I may not take an event. Like if all of a sudden I just see like 15, 16, 20 events come in with baby shark and uh right. all this stuff maybe that's just like i gotta stop this is where me as a business owner i have to learn how to say no yeah because that's just not my cup of tea like i'm not getting into baby shark events right it falls back to the interview the couple 
uh, and make sure we're aligning with the events that we right. want to do, right? So it's just exactly, you know. But a, an event that every now and then, and it, that, this is what happens. Well, I, I get you don't. They like not talking baby shark, but then the niece comes in day of, and they're like, "Oh, play it for him. It's fine." Right, right. You know what I mean? And or they'll. Uh, how many times has this happened, DJs, with, with you guys out there? And they they swear up and down to you, like, "This is not going to be uh, played at my wedding." Right? Yeah. Shut up and dance is not going to be played. I hate Cupid that. Cupid shuffle is usually the one. Okay, Cupid shuffle, and then what happens? They get drunk, right? They start drinking. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Let's yeah. play the Cupid Shuffle, and then they're they're the ones out there doing it, leading it. You know, it's like... it's so true. And th- I think they have this stigma around these songs because articles like these come out, and then they realize in the moment, oh, it's actually a vibe. Throw it on. I'm not right. actually opposed. I think it's the stigma of wanting to stay away from this cheese. You know, and and, and if you have a good DJ, like let's just say, uh, let's take a song like um, I don't know. A thousand years. Okay. It's on here. Maybe the person doesn't like it, but you're like, you know what though? But the, and does this ever happen where you have a bride and a groom and they've got opposing views? Like she's like, I love that song a thousand years, but he hates it. And then I can be like, you know what? I've got a version that I'll, I'll sample it. Yes. You'll only hear like 15, 20 seconds of that track mm-hmm. on top of something else. And now you've combined both worlds, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, that'll exactly. be perfect. When you let them know, I'm not like your wedding this past week. Mm-hmm. You're not going to hear five minutes of the wobble. Yes. You know, exactly. that, hey, I'm going to mix that in with um, two minutes and then back we'll that trend. thing up. Exactly, right? Like, right. Yeah. And it's going to be like a minute and a half mm-hmm. verse and chorus in and out. Then True. I think, you know, then you can this is where you bring worlds together and that's what i always tell my couples is they'll be like oh uh people don't dance to the music that i like and i'm like give me your artist we can find remixes we can play or we can do so many cool things that can keep everybody on the dance floor and happy at the same time and and that it really opens their eyes and their minds to what is actually possible and i love that we can do that because that's our whole job is to deliver music in a new and exciting way but i'll have some familiarity to it right that's what i'm noticing is the home runs is sing along but it's got a different backbeat to it or something yeah no, I totally agree. So, um, yeah. So I thought that article was interesting. A lot I, of lot again. Of... I think she should have just said these are maybe songs that are most played or uh, um, overplayed or like hard pass is like very aggressive. Right. You know what I mean? And I can understand where she's coming from. So I feel like this was her do not playlist. Yeah. For her wedding. Exactly. Like, this was my do not playlist, and it should be yours too. Yeah. Right? I can see where she might have gotten her info on, like, looking at a lot of do not plays and seeing these songs continually coming up. So I think she should have just rephrased it in a way of, like, these are songs we continually see in do not playlists around the world. Or, like, people, these are songs, but, like... With that in mind, your day is your day, and right. I don't know. And I think it's, to be, and I think as DJs, what's well, attention we, grabbing? Right. Yeah. And we need to re- realize it is an opinion piece, right? Yeah. So it's subjective, and uh, you know, take it for what it's worth. I, I, I would say a lot of these songs come up on our do not playlists for sure. You know. Yeah. Um, but you, this is where you have to be experienced as a DJ, read your client, know what your client's needs are, what mm-hmm. their wants are, and figure out what it's going to take for you to deliver an awesome product on the dance floor. Yeah. And then in, you know, in 10 more years, like things are going to change. Things are going to get overplayed again. Right. Right. Uh, juice by Lizzo might just be something that's always played at weddings. And now it's like, Oh yeah. Or Jack Harlow right now. Right. Yeah. Like, right. You know, stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. okay, let's, uh, we're going to move on into the next segment here. Oh yeah. Yeah. We got some new tipsy music. Copyright free. That's <laughs> Not getting banned. Not today. That's right. <laughs> so uh, we're going to get tipsy with you all. And since we're on the music tip here, um, we want to give you some music tips for your wedding day. So this segment yeah. is going to be really geared toward, I would say, potential couples that are planning your wedding mm-hmm. and want to think about what are the different parts of the night that I'm going to need music for. Yeah, the that DJs need to, like, yeah, sectioning out the music and really thinking about, like, where do you need to have music placed and just overall what the vibe you should think about for each section. Right. So let's start off. Number one 
is what I'm calling the get ready playlist. Yeah. All right. So uh, this is uh, you wake up in the morning. You got to get dressed. You're with your your girls, uh, the bridesmaids. Maybe the dudes are at somebody's house. You're, you're getting ready. You got to have a playlist to get ready. You know what I just saw today, actually, was Spotify has a new feature for premium users called AI Playlist. I know I'm going to use it for playlist curation and different things for when couples give me certain artists. Yeah. But what it does is it takes a couple songs and organizes it, makes a playlist based on your vibe. What you can do is you can type in, give me a country music playlist with no sad songs that is an overall uplifting vibe, and it'll filter in that. And then you can say, take out all the songs written by Alan Jackson, and then it'll take them out. Add in a couple more songs that are jazzy. Yes. And it'll, it'll, so it's machine learning you exactly. and what your tastes it'll are. It'll modify vibe. Uh. your playlist. So if you say to AI on Spotify, make me a get ready playlist that, uh, exemplifies artists like Beyonce, Megan Trainer, and Taylor Swift. Boom, it's going to give you one right away. So I think that's really, really cool how it's doing that. And then you can also ask your DJs, too, to make one for you if right. you have no expertise in that field. I think that's a cool, cool way to totally add on. I like it. Okay, so number two... Um, you're going to need some, some music as your guests are arriving for the ceremony. So we call this the pre-ceremony music. And I think there's a few different ways you can go. Um, typical vibes for us are, uh, co instrumental covers. So, um, you know, those tend to be re really popular, yeah. but even love songs. Um, if you can theme it out country love songs, you know, slower stuff and it's just background vibes. And I've mentioned it in the past. We've had a, th a couple who was Irish quarter celtic they yeah had like a, a celtic kind of vibe with the dropkick murphy's yeah. the <laughs> not during the ceremony logging molly yeah, right during your um, ceremony but if you're in a setting like santa fe we love playing spanish guitar right really adding to the theme of your overall space when people walk into a venue space and they hear something as well as smell see it just enhances your overall senses and it really adds to the theme of your event um you know, soft piano is really great, harp. But then I've had couples who want to switch it up and yeah. have really bright love songs that are higher energy but still kind of fun, right? And so right. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can go about that route and don't hold back on trying to be creative in this sense because no one's dancing. There are literally no wrong answers. Maybe a little bit. I always say that, right? There's uh, no wrong answers. There, well, you can't be honestly, playing like Metallica. People, I, I guess so, you know. Like, Nothing it, else matters. <laughs> During your do an instrumental cover of it That's, that could hit it'd be perfect right uh, and i would say that ceremony that pre-ceremony list minimum throw 10 songs in there that's all you need you know yeah. so um okay cocktail hour vibes so once again I, I i i like to get input i think this is where a couple can really put your stamp on the event um, if you want to come up with a playlist, I really enjoy when our couples do that because this is a, a, a point of the night. Once again, your background music, somewhat radio DJ. And, um, if you've got some eclectic taste in music that isn't like mainstream dance floor songs or bangers, put them in this list right here. And then like me as the DJ, if I'm DJing your cocktail hour, I mix those in, right? Like, and play with that vibe and then add to the list and that sort of thing. Yeah. So, and uh, don't be afraid to theme this out either. I think it's really cool when people get kind of creative with the cocktail hour, 80s songs or whatever, Motown. Yeah. Um, we did modern songs that were all covered by saxophones. I mean, time. you know you what go. I mean? And so it was like Hotline Bling Drake, but on a saxophone. Yeah. You know? And so um, I've always been a fan of stuff like that. Um, and just, yeah, really theme it out. I, I love the idea of making sure that each being really intentional with the music um, because someone is out there always listening or having an active ear, even if they don't even think they're having an active ear. Yeah. It helps. And I just think it's a way to personalize it. Once yes. again, make your event about you personalize that list mm -hmm. okay uh number four is a uh, grand entrance or the intros all right so uh i know there's a few different ways you can do this you could have a, a song for each individual person coming in if you want um that can get kind of fun a little bit tricky sometimes for djs depending on how many people are in the in the party but it, fairly easy to do we've yeah. done that
that a lot. And I think the trend right now that we're seeing is groups coming in, like all the guys yeah. coming in together or all the the ladies coming in together, which Definitely is pretty cool. That. Yeah, I'm seeing more of either the groups coming in or them not having a wedding party come in at all. They still right. have their wedding party members, but a lot of couples are really just like going from grand intro. I'm seeing it almost always now is into first dance. Yeah. We're seeing it more and more. It was like a big thing. New oh, b- Brides are doing it. Now it's pretty much standard. Right. I'm noticing. All right. Number five, um, what it, which we've talked about actually a lot recently on this pod, and that's the in-betweens. All right. They're so huge. As a guest last weekend, you really have to think about what is the experience from the movement from the ceremony space to the cocktail hour space? Are they handed a drink? Are they walking into music? Is the room ready? All of these little things really do help enhance it because they, people aren't thinking about it, but then it actually, you're like, oh, wow, wow, this is really nice, you know? And so, yeah, thinking about the in-betweens, making sure you have music placed in those spaces or something to help uh, encourage a, a kind of ambiance or environment, right. you know, or just if you know there's going to be kind of like this little bit of a lull and um, even in between toasts, all right, uh, just a little background, low low level background music, yeah. um, just little little touches like that can really make a difference throughout totally. the night. Mm-hmm. All right, number six that we've got here is going to be your formalities. So these are going to be things like your first dance, mother son, father daughter dances, maybe a sibling dance. I've seen that before. Mm-hmm. Um, so anything, that, any you know, you're going to need music obviously for those types of things. Um, it's good to think about those songs and be mindful of it. Uh, a lot of couples are now evolving to the minute and a half versus full length right. of it you know so I and i'll always tell our couples because we do get asked that all the time do we have to dance like the full four minutes like with my dad that's all, how many times do you dance with your dad yeah all right or your mom it's like it's gonna be awkward um it is what it is but i always tell our couples there's two things that we can do either uh you can just give me whenever you're ready have your moment Give me a little head nod, you know, and I'll fade out one more time. Put your hands yeah, together yeah. for, you know, or if you want to just do a verse and a chorus, most songs, it tends to be about a minute and a half. And that is like good enough. And that going through that chorus, um, uh, it makes a nice clean break and like exactly it feels natural and organic to just get out at that point. So, yeah, that's a good way to do it. Oh, man. Things just keep coming up <laughs> from your wedding. Yes. So before every single song. Before the first dance, before the father daughter, for before the mother son, they would say, "All right, your song is on," and then push play. No, it's like stop saying that. Oh, <laughs> I'm like, man. I present to you their first dance as husband and wife, you know, or their uh, the father daughter dance, like. Oh, my God. It was so painful to hear her say over and over, all right, your music is on. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Painful. Bruh. Bruh. Uh, okay. Number six, or sorry, number seven is going to be uh, what I'm just listing as, like, ethnic dances, miscellaneous yeah. dances. Additional family things. Yeah, so, like, here in New Mexico, La Marcha is going to be a big one. Yeah. Um, you're going to need to know that. Um, the Hora. It's a big one. Um, I'm trying to think of other ones. What, what are, those are two big ones. Um, other, I know a lot of times, like when we do Indian weddings, or they certain, have like a formal dance a lot of times to like kickstart the dance for. We've done that a few times. Yeah. you know what I mean, like a kind of a curated dance. Right, right, right. I've seen that a couple. Times. Yeah, I've seen. Uh, you know, um, I don't know. You got. I mean, it's it, it could be any any different type of. Those are probably the big dances. three. Yeah, you know what I mean. I'm trying to think of something else. La Marcha is 80%, and if we do have a Jewish wedding, we do tend to have the horror. You know, that's so fun. Um, I just can't think of anything. Nothing is really standing out. Speaking Those- of, so this reminded me, we've got um, an event coming up here really soon, and this is actually our first time. We, we need to talk about this on a different pod, but we are actually bringing in a DJ from out of state, my good friend oh, Dana. Yeah. Uh, Dana is coming in and doing an awesome wedding for us. But I need to talk with her about La Marcha. She doesn't know? Well, she's from Ohio. I don't know why she would know. That's but true. this couple also isn't 
native to New Mexico either, so it may not matter, but yeah. I just want to make sure that she's just aware of it, right? So I have an interesting bride who isn't from New Mexico. Neither of them are from New Mexico, and they want to do La Marcha. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, a lot, so, People will come here, and they want to do traditional they were like, oh, New, Mex- fun, New Mexican exciting, things. That sounds you know? I'm like, yeah, it's cool. It's a good time. Make sure you have somebody who leads it knows what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah. Get familiar with Al Hurricane. All right. <laughs> Number eight um, is going to be like a, a party starter. So you don't have to do this. This isn't, but it's just I thought about this. You know, you might think about how do I want to open up the dance floor for my open dancing. You can be very strategic with it and totally. intentional, and it's helpful. And I think the reason why I think it's helpful um, is because if I know that there is a song that's going to get you, the bride and groom, immediately on the dance floor. Yep. So this is a way that you can get. I mean, it's really simple. This is how you don't need to play the Cupid Shuffle. To <laughs> open up your dance floor. Exactly. Why? Because they like this song over here. And if you get your bride and groom out there on the dance floor, mm-hmm. their family is going to be out there with them, all their friends. This is how you do it. And then you you can take it from there. Yeah. They like an awesome 80s track. Drop in hollow notes. You know what I, I mean? Like, right? what I won't. You get, that'll get in, but like that's the idea, right? You right. talk about these songs, talk about the intention, make sure you're doing La Marcha going in to open up right. the dance floor because we know how all of these things play out. So being very strategic with it. Um, if you're not doing La Marcha, I love when we do parent dances. You incorporate a slow mom, mother-son song, and then you remix something into that, right? ABBA, Dancing Queen, and then they're inviting all of their guests to the dance floor. It's not some random behind the behind the booth you know what right, i'm saying right. like they've met me a couple hours ago and yeah they're probably comfortable with me if i've done an effective job as an mc but it's way more effective to have your mom of the groom and the groom and the bride and everybody who's involved in the wedding yanking everybody from their seats and saying come on let's party and totally you run with that but yeah having these different strategies is so important because it can really kickstart your day and get it going in the right direction and then you you roll with it right go get a drink go do other things us as djs know how to shift and pivot into country spanish whatever but we, we it's always better to start with a strong open dance and then go from there yep all right, number nine, uh, a last dance track. So this is one that a lot of times um, my approach with our couples is, you know, we can have a last song if there's, a, you know, there's a certain way you want to end. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of times I think it does work better if you allow your DJ to just read the vibe at that time of the night. So if you are puttering out and we are on the decline, not very many people left, a lot of times a nice slow song tends to work for that. But if you are leaving at like or your party ends at 10 10 30 a little bit earlier you know a lot of people are still going to be there i think it's great to go out fist pumping on top high energy yeah. well you know? i mean i've gone till midnight fist pumping energy right it just it depends on the style Dep- depends reading, on the cr- reading your group. event right yeah and right. talking with them and making sure having that conversation beforehand too yeah. because there's those expectations of yeah we'll go till midnight and then you talk with them at least in your meetings letting them know Hey, do I have that ability to talk to you at 1030 and say, hey, what are we thinking? Right. right? Um, and then just having that conversation beforehand is huge. An awesome, awesome thing we're going to be doing for my next wedding. They suggested this, and I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm mentioning this to every couple now. So normally you do rock out one more time, Daft Punk. All right, everybody, please exit the room while the couple exchanges in their private dance. Great, beautiful moment, awesome. What we're going to do is we're going to have everybody get off of the dance floor, form a little circle around the couple, do a, a private last dance for them, and then remix something into high energy. They'll bring them back for one more rockin' dance. Mm. So it's like reversing it, but it's going to work out like really, really cool. I love the idea of it. I'm interested to see how that works out. Right. But there, I, I know, and actually that leads us into the the final one here, number 10, which is the send-off and private dance. Yeah. Because we've had a lot of couples that they want a dance just with them, nobody else in the room. Yes. You know, um, and it's typically, and why I put send-off on here is because that's a great time to do a private dance, is if, you, if they are planning on doing like a sparkler exit, a bubble exit or whatever, where we're taking everybody outside the room, I need everybody to make your way to the yep. entrance, Make sure you grab a sparkler and we will meet you outside as they're getting ready for that out there. Then the couple can have their final private dance by themselves yeah, in the room. It, it's a, it it's plays a nice out touch. really well. Right. So, yeah. But they were like, we don't. It was interesting to hear the couple say that because I explained them the whole thing. I don't know if they're doing a send off. 
So that probably is a contributing factor as well. Right, yeah. And you know what I, mean? I would say we don't do a lot of send-offs here. Ah, it's 50-50. Yeah, you know I, what I mean? Because I'll do, we'll do a fair amount, but it's yeah. it's just one or the other. I don't know, but like you said, it's a great time to get them outside, play your private dance, and then send them off in a nice way. Uh, one thing that we just started doing recently was after party mixes as well. Yep. So I just did one for a couple. We couldn't DJ their actual wedding, and he was really bummed. But he was like, "Bro, we'll we'll pay you if you DJ if you send us a three hour mix for the after party." It's like, sure, I got you. So that's something to think about as well, just as you're making your Get Ready With Me playlist. Have a post-event playlist if you're that type of people. If you're not, if you and you, you think you're going to be done and you're not going to go past that, I think for me personally, I love the idea of ending at 10 and hitting an after party. Having yeah, some we, we, This is a year that we're definitely seeing more after parties. Yeah, um, because there's definitely people who want to party, but there's those people who want to have that okay, the wedding's done, I can go home. You know what I mean? Versus like, okay, we're sitting here till midnight till the wedding's done. And I like that we're seeing the after parties in like a smaller more intimate s- setting. It's more yeah. intentional. And then you can, of course, you're going to have less numbers than you were at the beginning of the wedding. So if you have a smaller space, it feels more full. It's, it's smart to do that for sure. Right. So yeah. All right, cool. So um, hopefully you guys got a little something out of that today. We, uh, you know, d- just chatting over the 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 naughty list beefy segments for sure we went over that the over the naughty list yeah. and then our overall tipsy segment but yeah, so good music sesh hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that part that is going to end our segment today here on on the live on, on the, the live on facebook and on youtube uh-huh. and um if you want to catch the final segment be sure to listen to the playback um probably have this up either today or tomorrow on uh, spotify apple apple music wherever you get mm-hmm. your podcasts you can find us on on there because today I'm back to the music. Um, Tony and I are going to give our top five downloads for the month of March yeah. um, from last month, and uh, it's going to be geared probably more towards the DJs for that. Yeah, um, good but, music. We got good music for you to listen to and add to your phone too if you're yeah. down. So thank you all once again for joining us on live, and we will see you again next week. Later. <laughs>